Hello, everyone. My name is Joseph Sulia, S-U-G-L-I-A, and I will be reading for your benefit my novel, Table 41. In particular, I will be reading Table 23, which is the 23rd chapter of the book. One more thing before I begin my reading. I created the image that you see on the screen. It was not artificially generated. It wasn't produced by a computer, computer program, I should say. I created it myself. Table 23. You walk in the center of the street upon a carpet of hair, voles and lemmings, heard down the street on both sides. To your left and to your right, human beings are walking, walking around nonplussed, carrying backpacks and bags and looking hopelessly at the sky. They are walking. You are walking among them. The human beings are burbling and babbling and gabbling, making inhuman noises. You hear the caterwauling of a bobcat. Springing and diving, gerbils are springing and diving where you walk. Beautiful, svelte gerbils with huge darkling eyes, thick furry tails, white underbellies, and hazel coats. Beautiful, svelte gerbils are springing and diving where you walk. Jumping mice, door mice, and hamsters are hopping and bouncing across the pavement and across the tar. Down the sewers, they are hopping and bouncing. Gophers and kangaroo rats are engineering their way into the apartment buildings and, and the condominiums. Some are already within, gnawing their way into the cupboards and the refrigerators, gnawing their way into the pantries, engorging synthetic food, simulated food. The caveys and the gophers are burrowing tunnels beneath the condominiums and the apartment buildings. The porcupines are climbing the exteriors of the condominiums and the apartment buildings. Their long, spineless, prehensile tails wrap themselves around the vines for support. Their padded feet grip the unlined building walls as the porcupines ascend as if they were supported by so many Grigris. African mole rats are teething and tunneling, tunneling their way underneath the apartment buildings with their buck teeth, insect like. They will colonize the human dwellings. A star nosed mole with its fleshy, wriggling tentacles, the hue of coral and giant white claws lumbers along the streets, its multi-tentacular nose unspooling, grasping for signals. Ravenous shrews screaming and twittering, their gnashing teeth making strange noises, emitting the sound of coins grating against coins, Steal through the garbage that decorates the street, ravening for trash, ravening for trash. Voracious, voracious shrews chewing up the discarded hamburger patties and potato chips, gorging themselves. Zebra are chewing on paperbacks and gerbils are nibbling on hardbacks in the bookstore. Within the candy store, intelligent beasts sample the candy and the ice cream, favoring the flavors. Through the window, you see a woman wearing a red scarf as the capybaras scarf down the potato chips and frosted chocolate flakes. The bescarved woman squeezes a hamster against her chest and kisses the hamster head. Her cheeks are dusky with violet. Her face looks clammy. Within the seafood market, the intelligent beasts devour the insides of the clams. A young woman wearing bright bird pattern kimono steps past you. 
She is thumbing her internet telephone with her thumbs. She nearly collides with a Tricenarian woman, brunette, in a flamingo-colored dress, who is wheeling a baby carriage while chattering to her mobile telephone. The Tricenarian woman is no longer wheeling the baby carriage. She pulls out an envelope from her back jeans pocket. She tears open the envelope with her fingers. Wisps of hair hang down her forehead, wisping over her eyes. A sexagenarian woman, an airport bag by her side, is sitting on a park bench by the side of the road. The woman is alone, winding yarn into a skein. The yarn is red. She will soon weave the yarn into a red sweater. She smiles with a shy slyness. A taxi is spinning down the road and jolts to a stop before a convenience store. Out of the taxi clambers a shabbily dressed teenage boy with unkempt hair and black framed glasses. His skin is flinty, as hard seeming as flint. He removes his glasses and stares at the high rise, 27 stories of brown brick as it ascends into the sky like a glacier. White clouds drift by. You are both at the juncture between West Chestnut Street and Clark Street. As cranes are whooping in the sky, the children open their mouths and point at the whitely feathered birds and then eat their whoppers. You see a butcher wearing a peppery mustache. He has no more peppered meat to slice. His cheeks are smoothly shaven. A man dressed as a corporate accountant is talking with his son and daughter. He is holding their hands. A boy and a girl are posing for wedding photographs. The photographer has a white baseball cap propped on his head. He is garbed in a red Aeropostale shirt. A shirtless, orange-skinned man is watching them from a distance of 39 feet. He is bald and is wearing low-slung jeans. Standing before the best Western hotel, a sunglassed Chet strokes his girlfriend's arms while an involuntary celibate looks on with angry jealousy. A Chet is a former frat boy. The arms of the Chet are hairy. The girlfriend's black hair is stretched back and bobbed. The Chet looks at her through his panoramic sunglasses and grins. A man in a yellow shirt that almost seems phosphorescent is jogging past you carrying two shopping bags, one in each fist. A tribe of muscle-shirted volleyball players makes useless gestures at the animals as it muscles into the high ball lounge. Beneath your feet, a half-drunk bottle of MD 2020 Orange Jubilee is half-concealed in a crumpled brown paper bag. Across the street, a blind girl is playing a banjo. A blue car slows down and stops in front of an apothecary. The driver's door opens and then slams. An old man is ruminating over his fallen groceries, which are being ruminated upon by animals the size of pool toys. Brawled over a foam camping mattress are two ectomorphic youths, one male, one female, both blonde. Ectomorphic means having a lean, slender, angular body. They do not mind the mice and the gerbils that swarm over their bodies. 
knotting your shoelaces, you think of the journey ahead. You sail out into the street, the wind buffeting you. Thank you very much. This is Joseph Sulia, S-U-G-L-I-A. And that was Table 23, the 23rd chapter of my novel, Table 41. I strongly encourage you to read this book. You may find a Kindle edition on Amazon. You may also find concrete physical copies on Amazon. If you don't like reading books, and I know there are people who don't like reading books, and that's fine. It's fine. I would at least encourage you to listen to this video series in which I recite the entire novel, Table 41, from Table 1 unto Table 41, the 41st table or chapter. Thank you very much. This is Joseph Sulia signing out and signing off. Thank you.